it's gonna start well good morning welcome to this wednesday reflection um it's so good to be with you this morning i hope your week's going well um and it is always a joy and a privilege to get to share with you on a wednesday morning so thanks for taking the time to read or to listen or to watch and i do hope it encourages you so here's my question for us to ponder this morning what is your perspective on life say about what your main priority is or put another way what do your perspectives on life say about what is most important to you? Well, as you chew on that, I just want to reflect on the incredible weekend we had. I've heard great things about the women's retreat. So a shout out of thanks to Donna Vanvis, our women's director, and her entire team, and the volunteers who stepped up to make this weekend really special uh, for our ladies who were able to join them. So thank you so much for that, and excited for the ladies to get away, including my wife was able to join this year, uh, and that was great too. I'm glad she was able to be there with them. And on top of that, as the ladies stepped away to be refreshed, to be encouraged, to worship together, to build relationships, we had some gaps on a Sunday morning that we needed filled. And church, you did an incredible job of stepping up and filling those gaps on our Men on Deck weekend. And so thank you so, so much for stepping in to volunteer and meet those needs. You know that one of my hearts is as a church, that we would be a, a church with a heart to serve, to help where we can, to volunteer, to step into places that we love and to step in places that kind of stretch us but all with the purpose of bringing people to Jesus Christ and encouraging them in his walk with, in their walk with him. And so thank you. Thank you so much to those of you who stepped up this weekend to make that possible. Well, you know, it was a special weekend as well. For those of you who were here on Sunday, we welcomed back Leo Almeida. Leo had been our youth pastor for five and a half years before God called him to another church to, to be a pastor there. And it was so sweet to have Leo back. We want to launch our people well to celebrate as God calls them, even though our hearts grieve to say goodbye. But we also look so forward to the chances to be together again. And so it was so sweet to have Leo back with us walking through our third week in the book of Philippians. And I don't know about you, but here's what my notes look like this weekend from Leo's sermon. Here we go. This is what they look like. Uh, let's say I, they were just chock full of great reflections, of thoughts, of things I want to chew on for weeks to come. And just, Leo did a great job of unpacking this passage for us, uh, of bringing forward several questions. And one of the questions he posed was, who brags about Jesus because of you? Church, I couldn't help but think of so many of you that I've met with over the last year. You've shared with me how God has been working your life and what he's done in your life. And that's led me, inspired me to boast in who Jesus is, that he is still the, the Savior who changes lives. So I want you to know that your lives and the things you've shared with me lead me to boast in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it's just a, a, a wonderful thing to get to be one of the shepherds of this flock, to get to know you all. And thank you so much for sharing your stories with me over the last year. I look forward to the years ahead of walking together and seeing God at work in our lives and the lives of those around us, because he is still changing lives to the truth of his gospel, or the truth of his word and the good news of the gospel. Sorry, it's a, uh, I'm a little tired this afternoon. Well, I want to encourage you, if you missed Leo's sermon this weekend, I want to encourage you to check it out. Head over to cornerstonecbc.org slash sermon, or go over to YouTube or Facebook, or check out your favorite podcast app, and take a listen to, to Leo's sermon this weekend, that you might follow along with us as we walk through our Philippians study. Well, with that, I want to return to my opening question. When you share your perspectives with others, what are you communicating about your priorities? Are your conversations focused around your kids, around politics, around finances, around your work, or around something else? Uh, perhaps you've heard this challenge during your life that what your checkbook or your bank statement says reflects what you value. In other words, where you spend your money is what you value. The truth, same is true about our time. Where we spend our time is what we value. And I would argue in the same way, the words that we share, the perspectives we hold, the perspectives we share with others reflect our own priorities and the things we value. Well, as we walk through the first chapter of Philippians this last month, these last three weeks, there's really a series of questions that Paul has been addressing in each of these sections. In the first week, verses 1 through 11, Paul simply answered the question the Philippians might have, Paul, why are you writing to us? And as you know, Paul wrote to thank and to encourage them for their partnership with him in the gospel. And then two weeks ago, in verses 12 through 18, Paul answered this question in essence, Paul, how has your imprisonment impacted your mission to take the gospel to Rome? And we know Paul's response was this beautiful declaration that because of my imprisonment, the gospel is going places it never would have, including into Caesar's household. 
Well, this week, as Paul turns to, to verses 19 through 30, the pressing question seems to be, but Paul, how can you rejoice when you're in prison and when fellow believers outside of prison are trying to make your life difficult? So that's the answer that Leo walked us through this week. We saw Paul's answer in verses 19 through 30. And in verses 21 through 24, here's part of what Paul writes. He says, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I'm to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, but for, for, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your account. You see, Paul's priority, that is Jesus Christ, shaped his perspective about everything in life. If he remained alive, he would continue to preach Christ for the good of all, including for his fellow believers in Philippi. If his imprisonment led to his death, Paul would be with Christ. Christ was his priority. His entire perspective on life, on death, on his purpose was shaped by this, his number one priority, making much of Jesus Christ. So here's the question for us, church. What about us? What about me? What about you? Do we look at death as something to be feared, to be avoided, to hold off for as long as possible? Or do we join Paul in saying, my death would actually be my gain? You see, our world fears death, and I think far too many Christians do as well. Far too many Christians are spending their energy and their time trying to, to make the most of this life, and, and, and for fear of losing it, they chase everything. But what, what about life? Is life a burden to be endured? Is life a struggle to persevere? Or is life the pursuit of our own happiness, trying to milk it for everything we can get before we die? What's our perspective on work, on our day-to-day -day life, and on death? You see, our perspectives on these key issues reveal what really matters most to us, what our number one priority is. Maybe our number one priority is self-preservation, or our happiness, or our comfort, or excitement, or maybe, maybe it is Jesus. Our lives in this world as Christ followers ought to be entirely shaped by the truth of the gospel. You see, our entire lives ought to be shaped by the fact that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, that we too can experience newness of life here to share with others, and that we have the hope of eternal life to come. You see, as believers in Christ, because of the gospel, we recognize the importance of this life. As Leo said, this place is where we are on temporary mission with an eternal impact. Or as author Mark Cahill has put it, in heaven, the one thing we won't be able to do is to share the gospel. So that's our focus now. And so Paul then turns in verses 27 to say, Philippians, live as I do with a perspective that keeps Christ your number one priority. Here's how Paul put it in verses 27 and 28. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, that you're standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened at anything by your opponents. Paul's focus here is the gospel. And he calls the Philippians to make the gospel their priority. Only in this passage reflects a Greek word indicating the one and only thing. The one and only thing. The key to all, Paul says, is that the one and only thing to do is to live worthy. That is, live in a way that corresponds to one who believes in the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Live a life that is shaped by a perspective on all things in which Jesus Christ is not only your number one priority, but the one, number one determinant for what you do. This kind of life is what uh, that reflects the gospel is what Peter spoke of back in 1 Peter 2 last year. He wrote this in 1 Peter 2, 12. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So Paul writes, make Christ your priority. Let that shape your perspectives and the way you live your life. And when you do, not only will you see the life the way I do, Paul says, answer their question, but the world around you will see the gospel lived out in you and through you. See, Paul goes on to write to say, so whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. Fellow brothers and sisters in Philippi, Paul writes, if you make Christ your number one priority and let every perspective you have be shaped in light of that, you will be united as believers, working together. The word striving here is an athletic term for st st team sports, for working together, uh, for one purpose, the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus. Our perspectives 
are shaped by our priorities. Our lives are shaped by the perspective we have on life, death, and our purpose. As a group of believers, we want to come alongside one another united in the gospel. So church, let's hear Paul's call and join together in being united as one around the gospel of Jesus Christ. May we see this life, as Leo reminded us this weekend, as a temporary mission to tell others about Jesus, the, the one who saved us, the one because of whom our names are written in the book of life, and we have eternity to look forward to together with him. Let us build our lives, our lives now as individuals and as a church on this foundational priority. May our perspective on life and death flow from this priority in a way, church, that then unites us together with one spirit and one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. That's the incredible call Paul issues to the Philippian church and the incredible call he issues for us. Dear church, it's my desire and my prayer that this would be true of us, that it may describe us individually and as a community of Christ followers more and more each day, each week, each month, and year after year. I am so thankful to be united with each of you in the mission as we strive side by side to make much of our Savior Jesus Christ and to tell the world about him. May Jesus be our number one priority. May that shape our perspective, not only individually, but as a community that we might strive together in purpose in a way that the world would see that Jesus is the one that changes lives. I hope that's an encouragement to you today. May Christ be your number one priority. May he shape everything we think about, what we value and how we spend our time and what we chase after it and how we think about life and how we think about death and how we interact with one another. May the gospel just shape all of that in an incredible way to where we have a sense of, of purpose here, the mission God's called us to, and we have a sense of eternal expectation and hope that one day we'll be with our Savior and see Him face to face. Well, church, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful week. I look forward to being with you this weekend as we dive into Philippians 2 together. Take care. Have a great rest of your week. Know that I'm praying for you, and I look forward to seeing you this weekend. God bless.